Hi guys, it's Celine. Today's Wednesday, the 7th of April, which may turn out to be relevant for this video even, because weirdness. Um, I suppose it's not weird. It's normal. This is actually normal, and what I tend to think of as normal really isn't, because it's controlled and contrived and you know, pushed into little boxes and so on and so forth. I'm trying to get myself out of the box again. <laughs> I suppose this is really the 700th time that I'm into some type of inner child work. And I'm doing this because I have found a few tools that I kind of knew would be useful for this. And some of them are cards that I've got here, and some of them are crystals that I've got on the other side. The important bit is this very old photograph of little old me in um, 1970 or so, pre-dating um, my parents' divorce by quite a bit. There's a patch over here that I cut out from some type of fruit box. This is the back of the thing. Um, that's just, you know, fruits, raspberries and stuff. And I glued a piece of that in a, cup, a couple of years ago on onto the, you know, into the sky here. So that's not really part of the, of the thing, of the equation necessarily, unless it would be that my mum was a person to appreciate forest fruits and this, like that, you know, but um, I've had this photo for a while in the sense that it, I'm not sure how I got it, how I got it back because I haven't had it all my life. So there's a couple more like this. My dad in all likelihood took this photo and I'm smiling and I'm looking reasonably happy I think because contrary to everybody else around me I didn't really have a problem with people <laughs> and I have spent the last century half a century I should don't exaggerate half a century um, dealing with how people have problems with each other I don't still don't get it I still don't get it anyway the photograph came out of a book that I'm rereading. It's this book. It is uh, John the Gypsy Boy, which in, in Dutch here. I have not been able to find um, biographical, bibliographical, I should say, information about this um, with, you know, it's a kid's book. This is the uh, frontispiece right there. And my mom got this out of a uh, at a sale at a at the public library just after she had gotten back custody of me in 74 I suppose so it's really old and it's I've read this a few times I have not read this like all the time even though it is probably my favorite book and if I had to go to a desert island and I had to it would be really hard it's hard for all of us. If we love books, because there's the other book over there, and I would have to, I, I would be so torn if I had to pick one of the books. I don't know whether, yeah. But this has been in my life in a way. There's a story I could tell about this, how it has, to, it ties in with my, apparently, my uh, need, my personal, deeply felt this person's deeply felt inner need for freedom and space to live and enjoy the world and be in contact with things. And some of that is, is expressed in this little children's book in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that's quite special. So I'm nearly halfway through the story now, as it is. Um, so that's a special connection because I haven't reread really this book like a hundred times before. Um, what you get is like a little time capsule, right? You have a, there's a there's a, a little space of images and you can 
I find it really enjoyable for myself to, uh, you know, go back and revisit things like that with a couple of years interval in between so that you can really feel and sense in yourself what progress I have made since the last time I read this thing. So, which is probably like seven years ago or so. And at the time, I hadn't done my soul retrieval yet. I had so many things that I hadn't done yet. And it's been like unearthing a whole series of dimensions of that are really human, you know, that have to do with connection, with taking back your life in a way. It's really striking. Instant coffee. Because I have to. I have to make sure. I found out also, I realized or I thought, I came to the idea, leastways, that if you have a hard time waking up in the morning, I do. I have a really hard time waking up. Maybe that is because you have nothing to connect to at that time. It's easier for me to wake up if husband is around. Duh, yeah, I suppose. Because I can just latch on to him, right? He's already up and about busy and awake and my brain just doesn't seem to shift into gear at all anyway so far nice coffee what i've done is um i've set up this photograph of myself which is kind of funny in the middle of my table right here in front of me and i've been watching youtube videos and knitting and reading bits and on and off and apping what's happening with my friend and you know, so on and so forth. And as it was, I was having this photograph quite, a, you know, for me, quite striking, memorable photograph. I actually even sort of remember when this happened, when we, where we were, because there's a couple more photographs. And it was one of those occasions where we were out as a family in Switzerland, in the hills. It was sunny. It was beautiful. And I don't think it was my birthday, but, you know, it was a bit festive and happy and it was a good, good time. So I do have some memory of that, some indication, even though it's half a century ago. I was, having, having set that up, I um, had, I've worked with Rose Quarters and I'm going into the crystal business now at the moment. I have uh, worn this beautiful uh rose quartz which is actually pinker than it shows at the moment can i show any pinker no nah, it will always look gray won't it it's rather pink this one is more pink but this is not a rose quartz this is a uh pink opal actually that i've worn together in a little pouch i personally uh i'm looking around because i've got several of those and here's one uh, I make little pouches like this. This is a knitted one that actually has beads on. This is a fairly decent size that you can still wear underneath your clothes that nobody has to see it, you know, where you can stick a couple of those pebbles in like that. And I find that really, um, really helpful. Not all, um, you know, gemstones, crystals that you want to use are actually pendant shapes like so this is with a with an actual eye and uh, you know something that you have to attach you can just make this out of a scrap of fabric uh for no money at all and stick a ribbon onto it or whatever this is another rose quartz it's actually rather different in nature there's something also i wanted to point out in this context with this personal work and so on and so forth that i think no two rose quartz pebbles are the same like ever it is like they have individual voices <laughs> i'm you know just really fine-tuned to all this kind of stuff nowadays and it's getting worse with years passing so yeah so uh i've worn this today i've worn this worn this uh yesterday i would say this one is also twice as thick uh it is a lot pinker this one is a lot more translucent. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, maybe over there. There's actual bits where you could actually see how how translucent that is. 
trying to hold it against so it's not like transparent but nearly I can actually see my fingers through see oh yeah he <laughs> that works okay so that doesn't happen with this one at all and um, for some reason the pinker they are the more intense the work that they do for you I have uh, another one right here which I will show you just to complete the rose quartz department it's a big big has rose quartz egg I do not wear this around my neck because I will go like this for the rest of my life it weighs uh, too much to do that uh, but this is a really great stone as well it is a lot more powerful and a lot more um, I don't know physical somehow this one's physical the this one uh, is a different color again if I compare the two you will never be able to see that although maybe it's the camera doesn't show that does it just trying to see whether there is a way where you could actually see it actually this is more or less real life like this in the shade of my hand like so uh, this is very physical this one is um, intuitive I suppose uh, supportive certainly it's it's got like don't worry vibes about it to some extent this one is like way more um, trusting and it's more like a mental vibrational idea kind of a vibe so this is also really pleasant for me to use I'm going to stick it back in actually the stones the crystals that I've been using to greatest effect this morning are these little guys so I don't know if you are into this type of stuff if you've got any of these these are, I'm hoping that this will actually show, uh, agates. So they're pink African Botswana agates. They've got these really gorgeous colors. This is a color combination that I would walk to the ends of the earth for. It's got, it's, I don't know, I've got several of these. I've got a pendant as well that's really pretty. They'll never show properly, I think. Um... Can I show this? See how it's got like a lilac, lavender type part in the middle and then there's pinkish parts that have got all these lovely, almost if caramel were pink, that's what it would look like, you know. This is one of my top favourite little pendants that I've worn a lot because of how pretty it looks, never realising that it actually has a vibrational nature uh, that connects me back to my innermost emotional, I don't know, tendencies, uh, properties, if you say, um, to this person, really. So it's like it's vitality that belongs to what we share, what I share with the person on the photograph stunning so I see now that my battery is dying on me really quickly I will do an episode two probably tomorrow I'll just leave my cards out here because I also did a uh, sort of a tarot card spread for this energy that I connect that connects me to the person I was 50 years ago thank you for watching so far and I will see you again in part two sometime soon okay thank you for watching see you then bye bye